Hello Year 8, I hope you're well and having a lovely day. For today's lesson you will need your exercise book or paper, a pen um, and two extracts. Swimming with Whales and Tonga and The Sleeping Giant. You should have these already but I've attached them to class charts in case you don't have them anymore so you can reprint them out if you would like. Okay, so please can you write the date and the title of comparatives. For your do now, you have five minutes to create a list of as many comparative connectives as you remember. So please pause the video for five minutes or so to write that list. Okay, so this is the list. Please make sure you have at least five um, comparative connectives showing similarity and at least five showing a difference or opposite point of view written down in your book. So there can be any five from the list. The most common ones are um, at the top, but any five from the list, but make sure you have five from each list before you move on. So today's lesson, we'll be working on our skills of comparison in relation to two texts, The Sleeping Giant and Swimming with Whales and Tonga. Firstly, we, we need to re-familiarise ourselves with both extracts. So spend 10 minutes reading through both extracts and make sure you've read them very, very carefully before you move on. So now that you've reread both extracts, you need to identify any similarities or differences that you notice. You have 10 minutes to create a grid, like the example below, that shows similarities and differences between these extracts. So please pause the video for 10 minutes to do that now. And I've done one for you already in the differences column. So Wales describes the experience as equally terrifying as it is exciting. So pause the video now to complete the grid. Okay, so this is my completed grid. I'll read through it with you. If you didn't get anything, please add it. Similarities. Both describe exciting and one-of-a-kind experiences. Both are adrenaline fueled experiences. Both use sensory imagery. Both use language devices such as metaphors and personification. Both are presented as positive experiences. Could potentially encourage the reader to take part in those experiences themselves. Differences. Wales describes the experience as equally terrifying as it is exciting. Giant is described like an advertisement, whereas Wales details a personal experience. Wales is written in first person potentially making it more personal. Giant provides more factual information about the experience. So please pause the video if you didn't get any of these ideas and make sure you have all of them written down in your book. Okay, so your main task today will be to answer the following question. Compare the ways in which the writers present their experiences as exciting. So please could you write this down in your book? You have already identified the similarities and differences between these two extracts. You now need to find quotations to support this. You have 10 minutes to retrieve the relevant quotations from both extracts. As you know, your quotation should be short and explicit, with little need for explanation. So please pause the video for 10 minutes in order to do that now. Okay, so these are a selection of quotations you may have chosen. So please pause the video and make sure you have at least five for both Swimming with Whales and Tonga and Sleeping Giant. If you don't have five, please could you add some to your lists? Okay, so this is a model answer. Both writers of The Sleeping Giant and Swimming with Whales and Tonga present their experiences as exciting in a variety of ways. The first way they present this excitement is by describing the environment using sensory imagery. In Swimming with Whales, the writer creates an image of the ocean by describing it as cobalt blue. Similarly, in The Sleeping Giant, the walls of the volcano are described as being scorched with colours from a divine palette. So we firstly have a clear and concise point, instantly comparing the two extracts, and of course you start with that comparative connective both. You have evidence from the text to support the initial point. Explaining the quotation and how it relates to the question and justifying the first point. And comparative connectives used to move on to the second point and showing that is a similarity that is being discussed. So both both and similarly make it really clear that this first point is all about talking about a similarity 
between the two texts. So now that you've found the evidence, and what I'd like you to do is spend 15 minutes answering the following question. Compare the ways in which the writers present their experiences as exciting. So hopefully you've already written it down, if not, do that now. Remember to include at least two comparative points. Three would be perfect, but two is fine. Comparative connectives. Provide a clear point about how excitement is presented and provide suitable evidence to support your idea and explain it properly. Structure reminder. You need to make a point about how the writers present this excitement. Support this idea with evidence from the text, explain your idea, then provide a linking sentence. Use your comparative connectives help sheet to introduce your second point, discussing whether this is similar or different to the first. So um, by help sheet, sorry, I mean refer back to the list you created for the do now. And so um, this is often referred to as a Christmas tree question because you um, can follow the structure so comparative statement, refer to text one, text two, comparative statement, text one, text two, and so on. So it's just a really good structure to make sure every single paragraph uses evidence from both of your texts. But um, some people find it a bit confusing, so use it if it helps you, or you can ignore it if you like. The key thing is just to make sure you have evidence from both texts in each paragraph. Okay, so please pause the video now to complete this task. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Thank you very much for your hard work. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable, and I will see you next time.